is Luke's version of the call of the first disciples. But before I proceed with our reflection, I'd like to apologize about what happened last Thursday when we were suddenly cut off from our virtual Mass and those who were attending our Mass virtually were not able to finish the Mass because our internet connection was cut off. We apologize for this thing that happened last week. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel today brings our Lord standing by the shore of the lake Gennesaret. This is how Luke calls the body of water in which the Lord was standing and preaching, Lake Gennesaret. The other gospel writers call this body of water the Sea of Galilee. And John, another gospel writer, calls it the Sea of Tiberias. They are the same body of water. Lake Gennesaret, Sea of Tiberias, and Sea of Galilee. Because of the large crowds pressing in on Jesus to listen to the Word of God, our Lord borrowed one of the two boats moored near the shore where their owners were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one that belongs to Simon, and remaining seated, our Lord continues to teach the crowds from the boats. He was sitting on the boat, and sitting was the usual teaching position. From a practical point of view, by preaching from the boat, Jesus could avoid the pressure of the huge crowd that kept on following him, yet he was close enough to speak to them. Because at that time, let us remember that they had no sound system yet. It is a simple, a straightforward statement. And yet, there is a symbolism here. Our Lord gets into Simon's boat and He teaches from that boat. I'm sure some of us are aware that in the Gospel, the boat is frequently a symbol of the church community. It is very meaningful to say that Jesus is stepped into that boat the boat of Simon and that he taught from the same boat of Simon and it is a symbol of what is to come in the near future it is a symbol of the special role that Peter will play in the history of salvation now comes the lesson and the revelation at the end of the teaching Simon is told to go out into the deep waters and start fishing. Can you imagine an expert fisherman, the dean of fishermen, following an instruction about fishing from somebody who is not a fisherman? Our Lord is a carpenter and not a fisherman. But our Lord said to Simon, Go out into the deep waters, throw down your nets. And Simon said, Master, out of exasperation, we have been heard at it all night long. We did not catch anything. But if you say again, if you say so, I will lower the nets. And do you know that the place in that body of water where the Lord wanted Simon to throw the nets again, is that part of the body of water where there is no fish. There is no fish on that part of the body of water. But their nets were hardly into the water when they were so full of fish that the nets were at the point of breaking. And Peter and those others with him in the boat had to call their companions in the other boat to come to help them 
but the two boats together were now so full of fish that they were on the point of sinking. It is at this point when Peter realized that he was in, in front of somebody not ordinary, that he was in front of the Almighty, that he was in front, not in front of an ordinary human being, he was in front of God. And this is why Simon Peter said, Lord, get behind me. Lord, go away from me. I am a sinful man. It is a reaction of a person in the presence of God's overwhelming power and goodness. Peter did not belong there. The expert, realizing he is nothing in the presence of this man, instead, Peter becomes aware of his shortcomings. It is at this point when our Lord tells Peter and his companions, Do not be afraid. They are words they will hear again and again. Do not be afraid. The huge catch of fish made by the boat in which Jesus and Peter were is a sign of a much greater catch of people to be made by the new community led by the Spirit and under the leadership of Peter. My dear brothers and sisters, my only point in this little reflection is that in the Gospel of St. Luke, following the Lord is understood as absolute. Why did we say that following the Lord is understood as absolute? One must leave everything and throw in one's life totally with Jesus wherever that we lead. The boats and the nets were the security in which the lives of Peter and his companions and their families depended. But they left them. They left their boats. They left their nets. They left their families. They left everything else. That is why at this point, I'd like to address our seminarians a little bit. Probably you are still young to, to make a very crucial decision in your life. But when you start the postulancy, when you start the novitiate, when things become clearer, know what following the Lord means. Listen, seminarians. Following the Lord is absolute. Following the Lord is uncompromising. Following the Lord is total. And this is to emphasize the extent and the gravity of the poverty of the disciples of Jesus. This is the meaning of trust. This is the meaning of faith. This is the meaning of our vocation. And this is the meaning of our mission.